Putin has great difficulty finding Russians willing to die for him in Ukraine. Military bloggers and ordinary soldiers are increasingly posting detailed videos of horrific conditions at the front. Personnel changes in the Russian Ministry of Defense also hint at an official recognition that something is not quite going, as Kremlin propaganda claims, according to the Hill publication. One of the most convincing pieces of evidence of Russian dissatisfaction with the war is a billboard that recently appeared in St. Petersburg. The hero city has its heroes, the advertisement says. People are offered to enlist in the army and receive a whopping payment of 1.3 million rubles, which is equivalent to the annual salary of the average Russian. And what is especially important about this proposal is that the billboard appeared in the second city of Russia, which, like Moscow, is mostly free of coffins and prosthetics the publication analyzes. The horrors of war are overwhelmingly concentrated in the poor provinces of Russia, where 1.3 million rubles amount to several years' salary. This shows that the Kremlin is desperate for recruits. Even more important is that two years ago, Russians were offered 200,000 rubles for registration. The price of a new recruit has increased by 650%. Even taking into account inflation, this is a huge increase, indicating that the demand for soldiers is high and the supply is low. In other words, Russians are increasingly unwilling to serve. With more than 535,000 killed and wounded and more than 1,000 casualties daily, it's time for Russians to realize that the regime is using them as cannon fodder. The Hill writes, This change of mood, according to the newspaper, bodes bad news for the regime and for Putin himself. Their working assumption was that Russians love punishment, that they would blindly go to their deaths like sheep to the slaughter. Enthusiasm for the war was high for several months after the invasion, but it waned after Russia's humiliating withdrawal from the Kyiv, Sumy, Chernihiv, Kharkiv and Kherson regions a few months later. Since mid-2023, the front has barely moved in either direction and Russian casualties have nearly doubled. From about 600 to 800 people per day to at least 1,200 to 1,400 people. Putin, as the building writes, is happy to exchange Russian lives for a few square miles of Ukrainian land. But Russians seem to be finally waking up and expressing their disapproval of senseless death. Putin and his comrades are in a no-win situation. If they stop mobilizing, they will not be able to defeat Ukraine. But if they forcibly mobilize soldiers, they will increase the incentives for desertion. We don't know when the tipping point for rational flight will come, but we can make two assumptions. The publication writes, First, the longer the war goes on, the more likely it is that Russians will refuse to fight. As the supply of volunteers dries up and forced mobilization proves counterproductive, conditions for overburdened frontline soldiers will become unbearable. Time is certainly not on Putin's side. And secondly, if Russia suffers a major defeat, the soldiers will most likely save their skins by abandoning ship. U.S. military contractors may be allowed to go to Ukraine, this will be a serious problem for Russia. The U.S. administration is moving closer to lifting a de facto ban on the deployment of U.S. military contractors to Ukraine to help the Ukrainian military maintain and repair U.S.-provided weapons systems. CNN reported this, citing four officials with knowledge of the matter. The United States withdrew all of its instructors from Ukraine before Russia's full-scale invasion in February 2022 and has decisively ruled out a military presence on Ukrainian territory since then. As a result, US-provided military equipment that has been heavily damaged in the fighting has to be taken out of the country to Poland, Romania or other NATO countries for repair, a process that takes a long time. CNN sources said that over the past few months, the Biden administration has been re-examining restrictions on contractors in Ukraine in light of the continued advance of Russian troops and the delay in military assistance. They stressed that the decision is currently being discussed and has not received final approval from the US president. But if it's approved, the Pentagon will be able to sign contracts for the deployment of American contractors in Ukraine to help the local engineers repair equipment for the first time since 2022. For example, CNN reports that F-16 fighter jets are expected to require regular repairs after Ukraine starts using them. One of the sources pointed out that American companies participating in the Pentagon's tenders will have to develop reliable mechanisms to reduce threats to their employees in Ukraine. 
Recall the United States has repeatedly rejected the possibility of sending its military to Ukraine. In particular, this was stated by President Joe Biden. Recently, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Brown, rejected the possibility of sending military instructors to Ukraine in the near future. According to him, the United States can make such a decision only after the war between Ukraine and Russia is over. France launched a discussion about possible Western military presence in Ukraine and is believed to be gathering a group of countries that are willing to send their instructors there. US secretly delivered self-propelled gun to CT Hawkeye to Ukraine. It will be a surprise for Russians. Recently, it became known that an American company secretly delivered its new development to Ukraine, the 105mm self-propelled gun to CT Hawkeye. This installation is quite revolutionary, says Ukrainian military expert Editor-in-Chief of Defense Express, Oleg Katov. Hawkeye is a rather interesting and revolutionary self-propelled gun. It is, to a certain extent, a high-tech recoil damping system so that the SUV does not fall apart after several shots. Now in the USA, it is only being tested. It is experimental, but such samples have also been transferred to the Ukrainian Armed Forces as officially announced developer representative of the US company AM General he explained on the Espresso TV channel. According to him, the Hawkeye's installation capabilities are provided by the M20 Cannon in 105mm caliber. The first range of this self-propelled gun is about 11 kilometers. The expert says that there is also a fairly high rate of fire due to unitary loading. It has a manual feed, but it can be done very quickly. The crew fires eight rounds per minute. The self-propelled gun is very mobile and be quite actively in a state of maneuver. In conditions of counter-battery warfare, this is very important, he added. Katov noted that Ukraine is becoming a kind of testing ground, and if companies like AM General are ready to supply experimental weapons to the Ukrainian armed forces in order to prove the correctness of the concept, then this is extremely positive. A mobile artillery system which is already on wheels, in my opinion, to a certain extent still wins over a trailed one, at least in terms of mobility, summarized Oleg Katov.